Hello, this is Doug Tidwell for Redis Labs. Over the next couple of minutes, we'll look at how DevOps professionals can use the popular open source Grafana framework and the Redis plugin to monitor Redis databases, interact with them via Redis commands, quickly identify degradations and issues, and display real-time results from applications built on Redis. To start out, I've installed the Redis application plugin for Grafana and defined a number of Redis data sources, including connections to Redis standalone and a Redis cluster running on my machine, my Redis Enterprise Cloud account, and other Redis servers. You can define data sources for anything that supports the Redis serialization protocol. Now that we've defined the data sources, hover over the Redis application icon and select Redis Overview. This gives us lots of information about this Redis server. It's been up and running for 15 minutes. It's at version 6.0.9 and it has 556 keys. It's also nearly idle at this point. To illustrate the monitoring features of Grafana, we'll look at how Grafana responds when there's a spike in the server's workload. One of the widgets turns red as we jump to 32,000 ops per second. The dashboard has defined thresholds for this metric. It turns yellow above 10,000 and red above 18,000. Those values are customizable, of course. We also have 55 clients connected, up from 5, and the network traffic has increased as well. From a DevOps perspective, if these numbers are coming from a cluster, we could scale out by adding another node to the cluster and resharding. Or we could check our infrastructure to see if this is a DDoS attack. As it turns out, there was a spike in usage that went back to normal. Everything is green and we're back to five clients connected to our server. Be aware that you can move these widgets around, change their properties, add new widgets, and even create your own widgets and dashboards. As an example, here's a view of the cluster information section at the bottom of the overview dashboard. We've customized the widgets to replace the outdated master-slave terminology with the labels primary and replica. Terminology aside, the widget shows the six nodes in this cluster, and we can see which nodes are primary and which ones are replicas. We also get information about the hash slots served by each primary node. The cluster information section tells us when a node fails. Here we can see that the node on port 7003 is down. The node that was previously its replica is now a primary node. If we restart the node, the display is updated. Let's look at the Redis CLI dashboard. It has a number of graphs that show you how the server is performing, but the star of the show here is the Redis CLI widget. Let's say we're using this Redis server for caching. If that's the case, we can make the server more efficient by disabling persistence. Every value in the cache is temporary, so there's no reason to spend system resources saving data that's only valid for a short time. We can use the config get command to get the current value of the save parameter, then use config set to remove the value. Running config get one more time verifies that the value is changed. As you probably noticed, when we type a command, a help window pops up for it. If the command has options, the window changes to provide information specific to the option you're using. As an example, here's the help for the Redis search ft.search command. The Redis CLI dashboard is a great way to run commands on your server and adjust the settings for your Redis environment. You've already got a connection, so you can use this widget to do anything you might need to do on the server without leaving Grafana. So that's our introduction to monitoring Redis servers using the Grafana plugin. But the value of Redis data sources doesn't stop here you can create a dashboard that monitors Redis applications, not just servers. If you go to the URL on your screen, 
you can get a sample application that provides a dashboard to monitor an inventory management system. Every widget in the dashboard is tied to a Redis command. The four widgets across the top show, from left to right, the number of items in stock, the number of customers with orders that haven't been filled yet, the number of orders currently being processed, and the number of orders that have been completed. We get the number of items in stock with a simple get command. That value is simply a counter that's decremented as orders are processed. The other three widgets across the top use the Redistream's xlin command to get the length of three different queues used by the application. The four widgets at the bottom of the dashboard use the time series range command to graph those values as the application runs. As the demo continues to run, the controls change colors as their values pass certain thresholds. The inventory level, for example, turns yellow when there are fewer than 5,000 items in stock, and it turns red when the level drops below 1,000. If we restock the warehouse, the value turns green again and the store keeps running. We've only scratched the surface of what Redis and Grafana can do together. It's a great way for DevOps professionals to monitor their Redis servers and applications. Check the Redis Labs website for more details on the Grafana plugin and sample applications, as well as how to build custom dashboards that feature whatever values or statistics you need to monitor. The combination of Redis and Grafana is extremely powerful and flexible, and we encourage you to add Grafana to your Redis DevOps toolbox. For Redis Labs, this is Doug Tidwell. Cheers.